What's up guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're gonna be reviewing this all new 2022 Volkswagen Tiguan SEL R-Line. And before we start, I'd like to thank the management and staff here at Volkswagen of Newport Ritchie in Newport Ritchie, Florida for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to their inventory below and I definitely suggest anybody in the Tampa area looking for a new car to come check these guys out. So for those of you guys who don't know, the Tiguan's been Volkswagen's compact SUV since 2007. That's when the first generation was released. Uh, it mostly competes against vehicles like the Nissan Rogue, uh, Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4. However, this vehicle does have a slightly longer wheelbase. The Tiguan is about four inches longer overall compared to most vehicles in the compact SUV segment. But Volkswagen also offers the Tau, so it's going to be a shorter wheelbase SUV, still in the compact, subcompact SUV segment. So for consumers who don't want a vehicle quite as big as the Tiguan, but still want some usable space, I would definitely suggest checking out the Tau. So we have a review on that vehicle as well. But as far as this all-new 2022 Volkswagen Tiguan R-Line um, from the SEL trim, let's check it out. So up front, you're going to have your LED adaptive headlights. You're going to have uh, corner lights, too. So when you turn the wheel, it's going to have adaptive cornering headlights. Uh, very beautiful design. Check this out. You have a really nice aluminum uh, area over here with your daytime running strip. And since this car is currently on, you can check out those daytime runners. And they look absolutely gorgeous. But uh, in front of your projector headlights, you're going to have black headlight housing. Great design, I hope you guys can pick it up. I really love these headlights. That really makes the exterior on this 2022 Tiguan pop. Uh, you can see that these are gonna be the IQ lights. They're gonna be labeled right out here with a little bit of shiny chrome as well. But as far as this paint, it's gonna be a beautiful metallic. It is a little bit dirty right now, but hopefully I can get you guys some sunlight and pick up that metallic. But continuing along over here, uh, you do have dual uh, headlights up here, two projectors. As far as the grill, uh, pretty nice grill. It's not going to be shiny chrome. It's going to be a little bit of a smoke chrome. Still going to be a chrome material, but it's not going to be as shiny as a lot of cars. Uh, behind that, you are going to have your intercooler uh, for this two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. We got a pretty large Volkswagen badge right here. It's going to be housing your advanced safety features with a front facing camera down here. Full front sensing system too. So it's going to be very safe parking. This pretty large compact SUV. We're also going to have sensors in the rear and a couple sensors on the side as well. Um, this area over here, I like the chrome. I usually don't like chrome, but it contrasts this black trim pretty nicely. Uh, no functional air curtain, unfortunately, but as far as the design, it definitely looks pretty good overall. We'll take one last step back so you should see the front styling one more time, but take a step over here to the side and we'll check out the wheel and tire setup. So these are going to be 20 inch rims over here for the R-Line. Uh, really nice rims. I love the silver and black contrast. Um, as far as the tire setup, uh, they're going to be 25540 R20 Pirelli Scorpion all season tires. So pretty good all season compound uh, for a 40 series sidewall, pretty thin for um, luxury SUV. So we'll check out the ride quality and see how Volkswagen has composed the suspension for this pretty premium SUV. It's going to be sitting still below $40,000, but you can check out the plastic cladding over here on the side. It's going to keep your vehicle from getting a lot of rock chips and this vehicle does have all wheel drive. However, it's not a standard feature, so there are going to be models that don't have four-wheel drive. Um, so if you want to have a third row in this all-new 2022 Tiguan, um, you are going to have to forfeit the four-wheel drive, unfortunately. But as we mentioned, you are going to have a couple parking sensors over here on the side. That's going to help you park this vehicle and keep you safe overall. Right here, you got a little bit more chrome with an R. That's going to be coming, of course, on your R-Line package. you got a turn signal right here on your mirror. It is going to be a two-tone contrast mirror with the blue and black. It'll probably pop a little bit more of the white exterior paint color, but it still looks pretty good overall. As far as the mirror itself, it is going to have blind spot monitoring. It's going to fill up the frame pretty well. Not the largest glass, but more than enough, especially since we get blind spot monitoring. But as far as the window trim, it's just going to be the shiny chrome material. No smoke chrome, unfortunately, but still looks pretty good with this uh, blacked out B-pillar and very darkly tinted rear windows. But continuing along, we are going to have uh, smart access for the driver and the front passenger. No smart access for the rear, unfortunately, but not really expected with the SUV that starts under uh, 40,000 bucks. But Anyway, continuing up top, you can check out your roof rails too. So those are pretty stiff. They actually kind of feel a little bit flimsy, so you're gonna probably have to replace them if you do plan on carrying some pretty heavy cargo, but you can still see, you can shake this SUV pretty easily with those roof rails. But same wheel and tire setup back here, same plastic cladding over here as well. Uh, you are gonna have a little bit of a chrome strip that runs along your doors and it's gonna lead out back over here as well. And it does look pretty good. It's just, uh, check out these fake exhaust tips. I kind of wish they gave, you, gave us real exhaust tips, but we can take a step down here and check out the exhaust itself. But anyway, continuing back here, you can see we do have uh, parking sensors in the rear, like we mentioned. I like this diffuser. This diffuser itself, the black piece, it looks really nice. Um, I just wish it didn't really kill it 
with those exhaust tips, but not a big deal. I'm sure 99% of people that buy this car aren't worried, well, aren't worried about the exhaust tips. But coming up top, you can check out our taillights. They're gonna be LEDs with the LED reverse lights and the turn signals right over here. Um, SEL badge right here, Volkswagen Tiguan. Um, I like the aluminum feel. It's not gonna feel cheap at all. Uh, this vehicle is gonna have four wheel drive, so you got the four motion badge right over there. But that's better for this rear end. We can take a step back. You guys can check out the rear styling one last time. And let's rev it up a little bit and let you guys hear how this two liter turbo four cylinder sounds. All right guys, so that was of course the sound of the two liter turbo four cylinder sold by Volkswagen for the Tiguan. So let's check it out real quick once we figure out this latch, uh, which is pretty easy to access once you figure it out. And we are gonna have struts uh, which is definitely appreciated or strut we're just gonna have one strut for this suv haven't seen that one yet but definitely better than a prop bud but here you have it uh two liter turbo four cylinder engine it's gonna make 184 horsepower and 221 pound feet of torque no not the most powerful engine and with this four-wheel drive system you can expect zero to 60 to be around eight and a half seconds but that's not what this SUV is about. As far as low-end torque, it's going to have very good feel. We'll check it out once you take it out for the road. As far as usable accelerating power that you can be using every single day, you're definitely not going to feel like this SUV is underpowered. But battery is going to be on the driver's side. That's unfortunate. It's not going to help your weight balance. Uh, but the engine is pushed to the left quite a bit to offset that. But that's about it, guys. We can shut this hood. Take a step back. You can take a look at the front styling on this 2022 Volkswagen Tiguan R-Line and let's go ahead and check out the interior on this suv and this is where it's going to start getting really impressive um, i'm beyond impressed with this vehicle's interior up top um, soft touch material for your arm will often rest to be expected for a premium level suv aluminum trim down here with some really beautiful uh, wood look um, it's not going to be a wood material it's going to kind of be like an aluminum ish plastic but it looks absolutely fantastic as far as the door handle very good weight resistance very nice feeling aluminum uh, lock and unlock and this vehicle is going to have a fender premium audio system but beneath this little trim right here uh, this bottom area is still going to be soft touch you got contrast stitch leather uh, four-way power one touch windows for the front and rear you got your mirrors controls they're going to be heated and power folding too uh, this whole area for the armrest is going to be super soft uh, down here we are going to get some hard plastics but check it out we're going to have a felt line cup holder area unbelievably premium basically an audi in here uh, we got the trunk release right over here stepping inside this r line uh, you are going to have an aluminum plated r badge as far as these seats you're going to have three person memory seats uh, they're going to have lumbar controls right here full power adjustability as far as the seats themselves uh, the base themselves it's going to be this little cloth material with contrast stitch but the area where you're going to be feeling like all the time it's going to have perforated leather super super soft perforated leather unbelievably comfortable seats very solid bolstering extensions down here too it'll definitely keep you in place super well and up top you're not gonna have the most supportive bolsters but more than supportive enough it'll keep you in place while still being extremely comfortable i like this white little contrast and you got the contrast stitching all the way up top but as far as the headrest it's not gonna be the softest but still obviously it's gonna be more than soft enough we can take a step inside this 2022 tiguan sel r line and really check it out and First thing I notice is the steering wheel. It is unbelievably thick. Like it's really, really nice to hold in your hands. Great 10 and two bolstering notch right here. Will definitely make the 10 and two very nice to hold on the steering wheel. Uh, perfect nine and three. You got this perforated leather over here on the side. A great little thumb slot and it does cave in for your fingers. You may not notice it on the steering wheel, but you're gonna have an additional notch right here, which keeps your hand really well placed on a nine and three. It's gonna be a flat bottom. You got the R name right over here, aluminum trim surrounding it. Uh, the volume controls are gonna be right here. You can skip the songs on the other side. Uh, the cruise control settings are gonna be on this side. You can accelerate, recelerate, and this vehicle is gonna have a uh, radar cruise. But voice commands are gonna be right over here. Uh, you can adjust the infotainment. You have heated steering wheel over here as well. Uh, the turn signals, they feel really satisfying to click. Uh, they're not the thickest uh, support, but they do have a really well uh, weighted like click to it. So it's very nice. Auto headlights, of course, rain sensing wipers too. Really nice feature to have, but we got to check out this 10.25 inch Volkswagen Cockpit Pro. So right now you can check out digitally illuminated tachometers and go to about 6,000 RPM. Speedometer goes to about 160. You can see the fuel level. You can see the heated steering wheel. I think the heated steering wheel is on right now. Yeah, it is on. So we'll turn that off. So to adjust the infotainment, you got your buttons right over here. Uh, as, far, as far as navigation, we currently don't have a route placed, so we're just gonna have a view of our compass. Uh, you go to the audio settings, you can see what the song 
that you're listening to is you got your telephone settings, you can see your messages, you can call people, you got your vehicle status, lets you know uh, how much fuel you have, how much oil life you have left, and all that. But over here, you got your driving data, tells you how much fuel you have left in the vehicle. Assist systems gives you your advanced uh, cruise control and lane assist. Uh, so it deactivates it if you want. But as far as adjusting the gauges themselves, you press this button view right over here and check it out. So everything changes up completely. So here you would see the music. So if you go over here to the vehicle status, that'll be all you see. You can just see your driving data and all that. You have a huge view of the compass. You can see the elevation. We're currently 10 feet above sea level. Uh, you can also see what song is currently playing at all times. But you press the button view one more time and uh, now you got all this information. You got a digital speedo right here. Fuel economy, you can see the song. You'd still see the information that you would have selected from up top. In the middle, you can see the average miles per gallon and the time this vehicle has been running as well as the gear that your vehicle is in. But press the view button one more time. Uh, now we have the gauges again. So this is back where we started. And this is personally my favorite to look at at all times. So we'll leave it like this. As far as the dashboard, unbelievably soft. I don't know if you could pick it up through the screen and it continues through the entire dashboard. You have a little bit of a cubby right here, which is rubberized, so the stuff's not gonna be flying around. Really impressive quality. Uh, the mirror is gonna be frameless. It's gonna be auto dimming as well. Behind that, we have our lighting controls. You got the door lights, rear lights that you can all adjust from up front. You can pull this back and the absolutely massive panoramic moonroof opens up and it opens up really far. Watch where it stops. You can basically have the entire front area opened up with this panoramic moonroof. We can make our way out here. It's an absolutely beautiful day in Newport, Ritchie, Florida. Um, it's sitting around 72 degrees, one of the first days where I'm not gonna be sweating doing these reviews. But we can shut it up too. Um, it closes pretty easily and the overall process is very quiet. We're not gonna have a sunglass holder, unfortunately, but we're starting to not see it that much with modern vehicles. But as far as the infotainment system, let's check it out. So right now we can just see what song's playing in the radio settings. We press the media. This will show us our phone settings if our phone is plugged in. Check out the phone right here. We can call, see the messages, voice commands. So you can just say the words that are right here and it'll take you right to the screen. Uh, as far as navigation, this vehicle is of course equipped with navigation. We just currently don't have it set up. As far as the apps, so this vehicle is gonna have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Mirror Link too. We're gonna have car settings over here. So the vehicle settings are gonna be the dynamic road sign display. Uh, you got tire pressure monitoring systems, vehicle status, off-road status. We'll check out the drive select and drive modes in one second. Uh, we have the tire, we just check that out. But anyway, as far as the selection settings, you got the digital cockpit that you can adjust. You can adjust the off-road settings. So here you can see the grade, you can see the degree in which we're currently at as far as um, the compass. And you can see the elevation that you can see in the other screens. Uh, not quite sure what else you'd be able to see. Um, so those are the only three things you're allowed to see for the off-road settings, but it's still pretty cool that they offered you that. Uh, so as I mentioned, it's gonna be 66 degrees actually outside. So a pretty freezing day out here in Newport Ritchie. So it feels pretty nice. Uh, but you press the menu button and you can see everything kind of similar to the GM layout. You get the media, app connect, vehicle, sound on the bottom. Uh, so as far as sound, you adjust the bass, treble of your sound system, uh, radio, telephone navigation, and the assist systems up top. Uh, we have an additional screen over here for the climate control settings, setup car net, and the uh, legal notices and help. We don't have to go through all that. But we'll go back to just the, I guess, radio and check that out at all times. Uh, turn this down so we're not hit with the copyright but these dials uh they're kind of light not the most weight resistance but very satisfying click around the infotainment you're gonna have a slight slight amount of like piano piano gray that's what i would call it i wouldn't quite call it black it's like 80 percent black kind of like a gray but it's still a piano color it's not going to show as much fingerprints though since it's going to be a lighter shade uh, surrounding it, it's going to be that same uh, soft touch material that we get on the dashboard uh, right here behind the steering wheel it's going to be a little bit hard plastic and this area that your knee is going to often hit also is going to be a little bit hard as far as the climate control you got our vents right up top over here but the climate control itself it's going to be automatic of course uh, you're going to have heated and ventilated seats on this slr line trim so really impressive for a vehicle that's going to start around thirty-six thousand bucks to have ventilated seats really really thumbs up for volkswagen for that uh, beneath that, we're going to have U two USB-C ports. No USB-A port, but two USB-Cs are kind of where we're going technology-wise. You got the 12 volt right here. We can throw a radar detector in too. The bottom of the compartment is going to have a wireless charging pad. That's pretty convenient too. The start-stop button is going to be right over here behind it, and you have an electronic parking brake as well. All the way back here, we're going to have this drive mode selector. So over here, we can change between snow mode. That's the first mode. We have normal mode and off-road mode as well as custom, but we'll leave it into normal right over here if you press the mode button right up top. So you press that, we can adjust between normal, sport, custom, and eco mode. So for the purpose of this review, we'll start it off in normal, then transition into sport. We're not gonna go through the off-road modes, 
but between normal and sport, I'll let you guys know what the differences are once we take it out on the road. But we have our eight speed automatic transmission right here. Uh, no paddle shifters, unfortunately, but if you want to manually shift, you just pull it back right over here. Not the proper way to downshift, you pull back to upshift, you push forward, but not too big of a deal. As far as the backup camera, pretty high resolution, pretty HD. Uh, you are gonna have guidance markers and trajectory. Um, so, and it does tell you, look, is it safe to move? And right now, not quite. We have a fence behind us, but not a big deal. Put it right back into park. You can turn off the auto start stop back here. You can um, turn off your um, automatic parking. So this vehicle is gonna be equipped with automatic parking for parallel and perpendicular park. And you have your cameras and sensing system right up here. So press this button. We can check out the 360 sensing camera. Uh, we're kind of in between a rock and a hard place right now. As you guys can see, we got a fence behind us and a curb in front, but not a big deal. Kind of the only empty area in this pretty busy uh, used car parking lot but anyway we can put this back we can turn this press this button it sends us right back to the screen we're at before uh, back here we got two cup holders they're not going to be rubberized but you got these little slots that keeps things in place uh, you got a little bit of a storage compartment right over here as far as the armrest it's going to be super soft i like the contrast stitching you can open it up not the most space but it's pretty deep you, i'd say you probably fit a two liter bottle of soda in here uh, with not much issues but pretty comfortable armrest to put your arm on uh, you can pull this latch right here up the top. We're going to still have that really nice uh, piano gray aluminum-ish trim. You pull this latch. It's going to be a damped. Look at this absolutely massive, massive glove box. You probably fit at least like 30 license plates in there. One of the largest glove boxes I've seen in the business. Uh, not quite sure what this area is going to be used for. It doesn't open up, but we can shut this thing up. But before we check out the back seat, let's take a look at uh, this window sticker real quick. And absolutely unbelievable amount of features this is one of the longest list of features i've ever seen on a vehicle i'm not going to go through every single one of them but like we mentioned we're going to have a two liter turbo four cylinder engine with all-wheel drive with drive mode select uh, electric power steering four-wheel independent suspension 20 inch rims auto led headlights led daytime running lights led tail lights adaptive front lights with dynamic cornering lights poor weather lights i didn't see fog lights on this vehicle but it says poor weather lights over here uh, power holding, uh, uh, heated power adjustable side mirrors with position memory, rain sensing wipers, heated front wiper mark area, rear window washer and wiper, power tilt and sliding panoramic room, moon roof, R line grill and exterior trims, and the silver roof rails as well. It would be nice to see uh, what the capacity for the roof rails are on the window sticker because, like I said, they don't feel quite as um, solid as some other roof rails I've felt before, but this should this still be more than doable for 99% of customers but here for interior uh, we are going to have dual zone auto climate control and we're gonna have adjustable air vents in the second row le leather wrapped r-line steering wheel with touch controls heated steering wheel tilt and telescoping uh heated and ventilated seats for the driver's seat and the front passenger seat second row 40 20 40 splits uh reclines with the center armrest to vienna leather seating surfaces uh so this is going to be true leather seats although the outside over here you are going to get a little bit of cloth but we're gonna have stainless steel uh, cup holders, USBs, uh, USB and USB-C ports all over the car. I haven't seen any USBs, maybe in the back seat. Uh, we're gonna have the black headliner for the R-Line trim up top. But that's about it for the interior. You guys can pause, check out the rest of the features. As far as the safety and driver assistance, we're not gonna go through the safety. As far as the driver assistance for the IQ drive features, uh, we are gonna have travel assist with semi-automated driving assistance, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, uh, lane keeping assist, emergency assist with semi-automatic vehicle assistance in medical emergency that's pretty interesting uh, front assist forward collision warning with autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian monitoring active side assist with blind top, blind side monitoring rear cross traffic alert as far as the technology and convenience uh, we are going to get the digital cockpit pro the 10.25 configurable digital instrument display uh, you have anti-theft system with engine immobilizer that may be something you might want to look into I'm not quite sure what that is uh, keyless access front doors or lift gate push button engine start remote engine start hands-free easy open easy close remote power rear lift gate uh, discover eight inch navigation I'm not going to go through all these features you guys can pause check it out after all these features yes we got a lot a lot of them we're still sitting at a base msrp before destination around thirty six thousand and a half dollars after about 350 bucks in options for the roadside assistance kit and the trunk liner with cargo mats, uh, as well as a $1,200 destination charge, we're still sitting well under 40,000 bucks in this SUV. 38,150 for the MSRP. Pretty good value. Once you take it out for a drive, we'll really see how well this vehicle drives. But as far as the interior luxury and feel, the quality of the materials, super, super impressive, at least for the front seat. But let's take a look at the back real quick 
and then take this car out for a drive. All right, guys, so taking a step into the back seat on this 2022 Volkswagen Tiguan SEL R-Line. So up top, we're just gonna have uh, hard touch materials up top. Uh, kind of not expected. I was expecting to have some soft touch up here, uh, but not a big deal down here. You're gonna have some really nice contrast stitch leather trim and where your arm is actually gonna be resting, super soft leather, and it carries all the way up to the front where your one power one touch is for the window trim. And it's really nice that you have the power one touch for the for, to go down and up. That's a nice high quality touch. I just wish that this area could have been a little bit of a softer plastic, but come on, not a very big deal. You got a really high quality aluminum door handle, nice piano black trim, that 80% piano black, that piano gray, I guess I'll call it. Uh, nice door handle over here, hard plastic on the outside, but this area over here, it is gonna be lined with felt. So that is gonna be a really high quality touch with your Fender premium sound speaker right down here. But as far as the seats, same design as up front. You can have the perforated leather, really nice solid bolstering for the back seats. You usually don't see back seats with much bolstering at all. Uh, no bolstering down here, however, this is just gonna be basically a flat little bench area. But that perforated leather is really, really soft. We'll take a step in here and take a look at the legroom in this 2022 Tiguan. And as you see, I'm six feet tall sitting behind my seat settings and I got a ton of space. I got like eight inches behind by myself. So really impressive so far. Right here, you can adjust the vents. You got a USB-C port right here and you have a 12 volt outlet over here with a little bit of additional storage. But really spacious back here, unbelievably impressive. You can see through this panoramic moonroof, which is absurdly massive. This is one of the largest moonroofs I've seen in any SUV so far. This is like a moonroof that you would expect to see on like a Wagoneer or an Escalade, but you have it here on a compact SUV. But back here, you do get map pockets back here behind both the driver and the front passenger. We have a little storage cubby over here, a uh, nice little armrest area for two people and you can fit a couple cups and they are rubberized as well. But these seats, they are gonna have like infinite range. You could slide them right down here, back and forth. Uh, but this is gonna be the farthest back setting. And this is nice because this vehicle is gonna be equipped with a third row if you um, forego the four wheel drive, of course. It's unfortunate we couldn't keep the all wheel drive and the third row, but this is just a compact SUV. It'll probably take up too much space. And even if they did include a third row with the all wheel drive system, the all wheel drive system would make it so that the seats are higher up and nobody more than like four feet tall will be able to sit back there anyway. So kind of makes sense. But that's about it for the back seat. Let's check out the trunk real quick and then take this car out for a drive. All right, guys, so to step into the trunk on this 2022 Tiguan SEL R-Line, you simply press the button and it pops right up. We are gonna have quite a bit of stuff back here, but not a big deal. Hopefully you guys can still get a good sense on the overall cargo space and you do get quite a bit. The seats do fall down 40, 40, 20. So you should be able to fit a 60 inch TV back here with basically no issues at all. Uh, to drop the seats, you simply pull this little latch right here on both sides and the seats fold down pretty easily, but to press this button right here, you can watch the trunk close right up. We'll take a step back and basically makes zero noise, very quiet system. But other than that, that's about it for this 2022 Tiguan SEL R-Line. Let's take this car out for a drive. All right, guys, now that we've just about seen everything we need to see with the inside and outside of this all new 2022 Volkswagen Tiguan SEL R-Line, let's take it out for a drive. And the first thing that I noticed before we even start with anything is the steering wheel feels absolutely perfect in your hands. Uh, truly one of the best steering wheels I've ever felt um, in my life, including sports cars. This is a true, truly impressive steering wheel. All right, taking a step out to this road over here, we'll throw it in a little bit quicker than we should. The steering is unbelievably sharp and come back out really solid torque. You can hear that turbo spooling up. We go to about 3,500 RPM and it takes us to 45 miles an hour really, really quickly. So no, not gonna be the most powerful engine, but that torque comes in really, really quickly and it carries it along all the way throughout the power band. So with, with very limited throttle too. So you don't have to be pushing the gas pedal uh, more than really a third of the way. And the vehicle just really has very solid acceleration. But we'll slow down right here, take a look at how this vehicle can accelerate off the line. Uh, we got a pretty solid empty road right over here. We're not gonna launch it or anything, no brake torquing, just zero miles per hour and on the gas. Uh, so a little bit of lag, but once that turbo kicks in, whew, very strong, very quick shifts too. Guys, this is more than quick enough. Um, I would actually argue, I've read on the Car and Driver website that they tested the zero to 60 in this car in like nine seconds. Uh, oh my God, that squirrel almost, that squirrel almost had a death wish. That could have been pretty bad. Whew. But all right, right here, we got a really, really sharp turn with except in the brakes, which feel fantastic throwing it in. Wow, very sharp and coming out about half throttle. Uh, once the turbo spools in, you do have a very solid amount of torque. But again, it, you do need the turbo.
turbo to spool in for the torque. But as I was saying, ooh, another turning. The turning in this vehicle is really impressive. Wow. Uh, I'm going to try it out in sport mode. But maybe one time, eventually I can finish my sentence. But as I was saying, the car and driver had this thing 60 in 9 seconds. I'm saying it's probably closer to like 8, maybe even quicker than 8. Right here, throwing it in in sport mode. Really sharp steering, guys. This is impressive. Uh, let me make sure that we're in sport mode. Uh, no, that wasn't even sport mode. Okay, so now we're in sport mode. On the brakes, throwing it in. Uh, wow. And coming out. This is, this is a fun car, guys, but okay, one more little twisty in sport mode, and sport mode definitely sharpens the steering up, uh, no question about it, uh, but it's still a pretty light overall steering rack, and coming out this time, we'll, ooh, when you step in the gas hard, you do accelerate pretty well overall, and I'll get you guys a POV shot on the way back to the dealership, because this is a fantastic road, you got some really nice twisties, they can really show you the performance on this R-Line trim really well. And uh, this engine, I think it might be a little bit underrated because I know 184 horsepower for a fairly large SUV it doesn't sound like a whole lot, but this thing makes it work. I promise you, this is a pretty powerful, fun little driving SUV. And you got all the luxury and comfort you could ever want or need. The materials in this interior are downright fantastic. The quality of the dashboard's great. The seats, unbelievably comfortable. Uh, the cool seat function works also unbelievably well. I'm, I'm really impressed with this SUV. Um, for the R-Line trim, it would be nice to get a little bit more of an upgraded engine, uh, maybe an engine that could produce maybe closer to like 240 horsepower uh, with maybe torque reaching numbers close to 300. Uh, that would make this a really serious performing SUV, like right here. Getting it into the turn a little bit quicker than we should, we still have unbelievably sharp composure, but um, I don't want to be taken out to this road like forever. Uh, let's turn around, I'll throw in the POV hat, you guys can get a nice first hand look driving this. 2022 Tiguan SEL R-Line. But all right, guys, back out here in sport mode. Uh, you can see these are gonna be some really sharp turns and we'll hit them at pretty solid rates of speed because this is a very fun, sporty little SUV. On the brakes, you can see water bottles flying, throwing it into the turn and it stays super composed and coming out, whoo, pretty good acceleration. You hear that turbo whooshing. The acceleration, I'm telling you, it's really, really underplayed. Uh, when I did the research on this car, I saw that the car and driver had the 0-60 to 60 test close to 9 seconds. I think it was like 9.1 actually. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is this feels significantly quicker than a 9.1 second 0-60 to 60 car. I'm saying you can get 0-60 to 60 around 8 seconds, if not quicker. I wouldn't be surprised if there are people who get this in like the 7.8, 7.9 territory. Um, especially if you do like a little bit of a tune with this turbocharged 4-cylinder. But throwing it into these turns, whoo! and just barely on the gas. Third throttle, uh, we let the boost kick in and you have very solid torque. You can see that speedometer climbing. My foot is less than a third on the way on the gas. But on the brakes, in one second, on the brakes, and this, was, this, this is gonna be a sharp one, you'll see. Boom, throwing it in. Really nice <laughs> cornering in this SUV. But uh, we're gonna calm down, we got a guy in front of us. We'll throw it right back into normal mode. But once we calm down, and just start driving normally like you would on an everyday basis in normal mode. The steering definitely feels a lot lighter. It's still super direct. You can see we changed directions with basically zero effort of the steering wheel, but throwing it through the turns, now that we're in normal mode, it doesn't have nearly as much feel. Still very direct, great steering rack, and the steering wheel feels fantastic, but everything just calms down overall. Uh, the RPMs also calm down, and you, it's, you start using your overdrive gears more. But as an overall luxury vehicle, and remember, that's what this vehicle is all about, um, as sporty as it looks, as sporty as the steering wheel looks, as um, well as it drives through the corners, this vehicle is gonna prioritize luxury and overall quality of the materials over the overall performance. But as far as the luxury, everything's fantastic. I love the seats. The cooled seats work unbelievably well. Once you're driving out on the road, you basically hear zero road noise, zero wind noise, super super well composed. And um, even, well, even though it's so well composed, it's still very capable through the corners, very solid chassis. Uh, really impressive platform overall. Right now we're on a multiple lane highway going about 50 miles per hour. Wind noise, road noise, basically non-exists. And this is one of the quietest cabins I've felt or been in a really long time. We can check the windows. They're not gonna be dual pane either. So without dual pane windows, we have a very, very quiet cabin. So definitely a huge thumbs up to Volkswagen. Um, in normal mode, the steering, it's definitely gonna feel a lot lighter, uh, like we mentioned through the corners. But if you're gonna be driving every day, I'll probably recommend just driving in a normal mode because you do get to keep your overdrive gears and it does feel just more comfortable and relaxing 
overall because remember uh, this vehicle is not going to be a true flat out performer it's only going to have 184 horsepower and say 221 pound feet of torque and that number may be underrated i think this vehicle might be a little bit underrated but either way you're still not going to be blowing the doors off people with this suv so the focus on this suv is going to be luxury and as far as luxury it's a 10 out of 10 well not 10 out of 10 but for the price range i would say it's a 10 out of 10 you got all the features you could ever want or need the leather seats feel unbelievably soft and comfortable while still being more than supportive enough we were going through the twisties and i wasn't sliding around my seat at all uh, the cooled seat function works very very well it's currently on and it's blowing in very nicely into my spine i love the cockpit display the 10.25 inch screen everything just looks super high tech especially the steering wheel this is definitely my favorite part of this car it's gonna be what you're gonna be holding the most so it's super nice that volkswagen gave us such a nice steering wheel but we're gonna make a u-turn right here we can check out the turning radius on this suv and as you see it's gonna be unbelievably impressive one more acceleration for you guys Woo! very solid this thing is going to 60 and definitely definitely quicker than nine seconds it's gonna be closer to eight seconds but other than that we're gonna get this 2022 tiguan back to volkswagen and newport richie and again huge thanks to them for making this review possible uh super appreciative of their kindness and they were really really impressive dealership i'll leave a link to the inventory below i'll definitely suggest anybody in the florida area looking for a new car to come check these guys out but other than that thank you so much for watching i had a great time making this video hope you enjoyed it half as much as i enjoyed making it um if you're new to this channel please subscribe if you've already subscribed Thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you guys. Um, I have a true appreciation for each and every one of the subscribers. But if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Join the WTF family. Leave a like too. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know if there's any cars you'd like to see specifically reviewed on this channel too. And I'll definitely try to get those videos for you guys as soon as possible. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. And I hope all of you have a great day.